Hello and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Tensions escalated on Israel's southern front with Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip over the weekend when Palestinian Islamists launched at least 45 rockets and mortar shells towards Israel's southern communities. Islamic Revolutionary Guards could force senior official, former Iranian oil minister Rostam Ghazemi reveals that the Iranian-backed Houthi militia was the one which targeted Israeli vessels in recent months on Tehran's behalf. The Iranian-backed Houthi militia in Yemen announces once again that it carried out an attack on the King Khalid Air Base in Saudi Arabia. Tensions escalated on Israel's southern front with the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip over the weekend when Palestinian Islamists launched at least 45 rockets and mortar shells toward Israel's southern communities. The indiscriminate rocket fire initially began at 11 p.m. on Friday night when rocket alert sirens sounded in multiple Israeli communities and the area surrounding the Palestinian enclave forcing tens of thousands of Israeli civilians into bomb shelters within the IDF Home Front Command's instructed 15 seconds. During the course of that night, Palestinian Islamists launched 36 rockets toward Israel's southern communities, six of which had a trajectory into populated areas, consequently triggering the Iron Dome aerial defense system, which successfully intercepted the incoming projectiles. In tandem, the IDF spokesperson's unit announced that IDF fighter jets and attack helicopters struck a number of Hamas military targets in the Gaza Strip, including an underground infrastructure and rocket launchers belonging to the Hamas terror organization. Subsequently, after a brief hiatus of approximately 15 hours, rocket alert sirens sounded once again in the southern Israeli city of Sderot and in the area surrounding the Gaza Strip on Saturday night. The IDF later confirmed that one rocket was intercepted above the skies of Sderot, while two other projectiles exploded in uninhabited areas, one of which failed to cross into Israeli territory. Quiet was then subsequently restored throughout the day on Sunday. Nevertheless, at approximately a quarter of 11 last night, rocket alert sirens once again sounded, with at least six rockets launches identified throughout the night, two of which were intercepted by the Iron Dome Aerial Defense Array. It is important to highlight that the IDF did not respond to the rocket fire directed at Israel's civilian communities since Saturday evening. Meanwhile, the Islamist Hamas organization and its ally, the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad, claimed responsibility for the rocket fire, asserting it to be in support of what they referred to be a Palestinian uprising in Jerusalem. Separately, in an official statement by Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh, the Islamist leader emphasized that all Palestinians are ready to defend Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa Mosque at any price. In response from Jerusalem, Israel's leadership repeatedly emphasized in public statements that the freedom of worship for all religions is being maintained. And while the Israeli defense establishment has been instructed to prepare for any scenario, it is evident that it is not interested in a military escalation. <laughs> מול רצועת עזה הנחיתי להערך לכל תרחיש. שמענו גם את הסקירה על המצב בירושלים מהמפכ"ל. אנחנו רוצים קודם כל להבטיח חוק וסדר. אנחנו שומרים על חופש הפולחן כמו כל שנה לכל התושבים וגם לכל המבקרים בירושלים. אבל אנחנו דורשים כרגע את מילוי החוק ואני קורא להרגעת הרוחות מכל הצדדים. Alongside Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's statement, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz echoed Israel's aspiration for calm, separately warning the Islamist Hamas organization that any escalation with Gaza would be its sole responsibility. ושומרת על חופש דת ופולחן לכל הדתות ולכל המאמינים ובכללם גם תושבי מזרח ירושלים וכלל הפלסטינאים. כרגע שקט בדרום, אבל אם השקט הזה לא יישמר, 
אז אתה תיפגע קשות, אזרחית, כלכלית וביטחונית. ומי שיישא באחריות הם ראשי החמאס. משוואה ידועה להם וברורה מאוד. צה"ל ערוך לאפשרות של הסלמה, ואנחנו נעשה את כל מה שנדרש כדי שהשקט יישמר. As part of efforts to alleviate the tension surrounding Jerusalem, Israeli police was instructed to open the old city's Damascus Gate for nightly gatherings, which consequently drew praise from local residents. I am pleased that the, the police that I are mean, coming to this conclusion because we don't need anything but to open the street. You know, people coming, families after the prayer. They want to sit here uh, hearing storytellers eating something, drinking coffee or something, and usually in the midnight they, they went home peacefully. This is what we need in Ramadan. In contrast to the claimed peaceful nature of the gatherings, after the evening prayers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount concluded, hundreds of Islamist youth gathered at the Damascus Gate to celebrate their perceived victory. During the protest, glass bottles, rocks and Molotov cocktails were hurled toward Israeli police forces stationed adjacent to the Damascus Gate. Consequently, riot police were instructed to disperse the protest. The police spokesperson's unit confirmed to TV7 that as a result of the riot, 12 suspects were arrested. Separately, in downtown Jerusalem last night, approximately 150 Israeli activists from the far-left Peace Now movement held a protest at the city center Zion Square, calling for an end of violence amid heightened tensions. We're here tonight because we are very worried about the situation that is going on in the streets of Jerusalem in the past few days. We want to uh, send a message both to the government and to our Palestinian neighbors that we won't stay silent in front of the violence and the incitement and the racism and we will defend the rights of everybody to live in Jerusalem peacefully and uh, with equal rights. People think about uh, trying uh, to, to reduce the violence that's now in Jerusalem. But uh, I, I want to tell them that if, if they want to go and fix this violence problem with peace, so they should say that violence could be not only here, also in Sha'al Shechem, in Damascus Gate, we're there every day, Jews are, uh, are getting, uh, getting beaten there. In other news, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Quds Force Deputy Commander for Economic Affairs, former Iranian oil minister Rostam Ghazami, revealed in an interview to Russia's RT television that Iran regards Israel as responsible for any act of sabotage perpetrated against it. نحن نعتقد أن لإسرائيل دور في أي عمل تخريبي في العالم وفي إيران كذلك للكيان الصهيوني دور في أي عمل تخريبي يقع في إيران الإسرائيليون يعلمون وعليهم أن يدركوا أن أي تحرك أو أي إجراء سيكون له رد مقابل إيران حتى الآن اتبعت سياسة الصبر وضبط النفس وعلى الرغم من ذلك إيران ردت وستواجه إسرائيل مزيدا من الردود The RGC official went on to distance Iran from any attack directly perpetrated against Israel, rather insisting that Tehran's regional allies, including the Houthis in Yemen, were the ones responsible for the recent attacks against Israeli vessels in the Gulf. ليس على إسرائيل أن تعتقد أننا بالضرورة من يضرب سفنها لدينا في المنطقة الكثير من الأصدقاء وهم من يردون عليها وهم ردوا على هذه الهجمات لدينا الكثير من الأصدقاء في المنطقة وهم لن يسمحوا للإجراءات الإسرائيلية أن تمر من دون رد لقد ردوا ونشر بعض ذلك في وسائل الإعلام Meanwhile, early this morning, the Iranian-backed Houthi militia in Yemen announced that it carried out yet another attack on the Saudi King Khaled Air Base in Hamis Mushit. The attack, which included multiple Qasif 2K drones, commonly referred to as suicide drones, was said to be a retaliatory response at a time when the Iranian-backed militia is on the offensive to try and capture the Yemenite city of Maghrib, from the internationally recognized Saudi-backed government 
of President Abid Rabo Mansour Hadi. The Saudi-led coalition did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Yemen once again in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the numerous ramifications of the corona crisis worldwide. Separately, I would like to thank all of you who partner with TV7 Israel. Your monthly support, both by means of prayer and finance, is of vital importance for our ongoing operations. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavua Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. Alpha, oh.